Hello mate and welcome back to Let's Code Season 6. In the last episode we finished off sorting out our game room class in a way that we could actually add items to it and that it just created a matrix of whatever size we decided the game size room the game room size was going to be. And then um, previous to that we created game objects and we created um, abstract class and instances of that abstract class. Now what we need to do in this episode is we're going to add some entities. Now as you can see I've already started writing a bit of code here and we've got an init one python there because this needs to happen fairly early on in the process because this is going to be fairly independent but it's also going to be used as part of the room creation so we need our abstract entity class to be declared fairly early on because we're going to instantiate it in later classes. And this entity has several fields. It has a name, it has a position within the room. Now we have four properties that we haven't seen before. Is alive, can attack, can use, and can move. Is alive is just our way of telling the game whether or not this object is alive or not. I.e. if it's not alive, does it need to be drawn on the screen? Or can it be interacted with in other ways? The can attack function or the can attack field is our way of telling the game whether or not this is an enemy or something that can be destroyed then it's a can use method uh, field the can use method is our way of telling the game whether or not this is a chest or a door or something that can be interacted with in some way and then the can move is just the game's way of saying can this object move do we need to move it every turn or not so much like we did with our game object class, we're going to have some abstract methods and we're going to have some non-abstract methods. The first thing we need to do is create our getters. So we're just going to pop a bar in there. Marvelous. And we need to actually define get name. It's going to be Self dot underscore name and then we can remember to put these underscores at the front of these ver values so that we don't accidentally interact with them because these are all read only fields these are going to be set when we create the instance we don't need to change them after that so all we have to do is return the properties like that using our getters so now we've got our getters what we need to do is create a method that's going to be relevant to every single entity and we're going to call it update so here we go define update and it's going to take in two parameters it's going to take in self and it's going to take in a room and we're going to have to change that lowercase room i think possibly and let me just check so i know our class is actually capital r so that's fine so we're going to take in a local variable called room and the reason we're doing that is because this entity needs to know everything about the room that it's in so that it can make decisions based on that information. So there we go. So now we've created a method called room. So we're going to call this from the actual room uh, instance. So this room object is going to call the update method for every single object within it every single turn of the game. So what does this update method do well the first thing it's going to do is going to say if self dot get can move and these can all be properties so we're going to add the property decorator to each one that means that we then don't have to oops that then means that we don't have to put the parentheses at the start of each one. Now update is not a, a, a getter, so we're just going to put that in a, a new area. There we go. The methods like that. Okay, so if self dot get can move. So if the object can move, then what we're going to do is we're going to say self dot move and we're going to pass the room in as an a field or an argument for that method as well and at the moment that's all we're going to do in the update method this may grow as we go on but what the move method 
is going to be the next thing we want to do. So we're going to say define at move self dot room like that. Now we already know that we've been told that we can move. So what we're going to do is we're going to check all of the squares around us and check that they are uh, not empty or that they are empty. If they're empty, then we can decide on some other things. But so we need to know where the player is within the room. So we might need to take another parameter because the player class is not the same. Uh, it is not uh, contained within the room class. The player class is a separate object. So we may need, and we haven't actually got a position um, function or position property within our player class at the moment. So I'm glad we caught that. So what we need to do is um, fix that as well. Otherwise, we're going to end up running into trouble. So player class self dot underscore position. And we're going to just set that to be, uh, I don't know, 5.5 .5 for now, just to make things simple. And now we're going to have to add a getter for that. So property define get position self turn self dot underscore position. There we go. Cool. Right. So we've got that. Now, in the room class, the room will contain a player. So we should be reasonably okay. This is all very complicated stuff. So we know our self.position. And that's there. So our gets.position. So let's just function fo focus on that at the moment. And I'm just trying to write this in pseudocode to explain what I'm doing. Get position contains a tuple. So it has a zero and um, basically a, a zero property and a one property. So get position zero is our X and our get position one is our Y. Okay. Like so. But it's not going to be that simple because we have to put self at the beginning of it. Okay. So what I want to do is I actually want to create a list of positions within the radius around our object that it can choose from because we need a certain amount of randomness. We don't just want it to move in one direction. We want ideally we want it to move toward the player. So this is why I'm thinking that we may need a reference to the player in our um, update method as well so that we know where the player is. But we'll kind of come to that in a minute. So at the moment we've got self dot get position. So our X position. Now, if you remember from when we created the room, all we do is we populate the room with zeros. So all we want to check is that in each one of the positions above, below, to the left and to the right of our game object or our entity, if there is a zero, we're going to add that position to the list. So what we need to do is say if and now we need to use room dot and then we need to come back to our room class and just find our get matrix property. There we go. See if room dot get matrix. And now we need to start using our self dot get positions. So let's just say that is going to be our second property or our second number <clears throat> like so and self dot get position. In fact, what I'm going to do to make this more readable is I'm actually going to create some local variables. So I'm just going to say x equals self dot get position zero and y equals get position one. That just makes life a little bit easier here. Okay, so now we can just say x and y equals zero. Cool, right, so we now need to just change this. So if I'm going to check to the left and to the right first. So we're going to say X minus one equals zero. Then we're going to create a new list. In fact, I'll do this in a list of possible spaces, uh, cells. 
There's cells on a grid. Okay, list of possible cells is an empty list, like so. Cool, cool. So if we're saying if the space to the left is empty, then we're just going to say list. I'll just, let's just copy this, otherwise it's going to take forever to retype it. List of possible cells dot append, and we're going to append a tuple into it, which is just going to be y comma x minus one. In fact, no, let's keep this simple x. No, actually, no, we, we can do it y dominant. Let's do it that way. So x minus one, like so, okay? So we can now copy this four times or three times, control C. So this one is going to be x plus one. That's stupid. I typed in, I replaced the wrong thing there. X plus one. So we've gone to the left and to the right. Now we need to change this to be the same X position. And we're going to say Y minus one and Y plus one. Like so. So we're going to say Y minus one. Y plus one. There we go. So this now adds to this list of possible cells. This basically is just a list of possible options for moving if our list is empty then we just can't move so we'll just re do a return so all we're going to do if list of possible cells because if there is nothing in the list it will be boolean false so we can just say if the list has stuff in it then we can pick one of the four options or one of the options within the list and change the object's position to it and that's going to be pretty simple actually we can just change our objects position so we're going to simply say uh, self dot underscore now we need to set the position so this is going to be we could use a setter but in fact we will we'll use a setter so we're just going to say um, setters Define a set position, and this needs to be a self, and then it also needs to be a position. And then we're just going to say self dot underscore position equals position. Now we should also probably check whether or not this is a tuple, but we're going to assume that we're always going to pass a tuple in no matter what. So there. Now I'm having a look at our method here and I'm thinking that our position is X dominant and we've created a Y dominant thing here. So what we may have to do is swap these round. Yeah, let's do that now. Yeah, I, I did sort of momentarily hesitate when I was writing this previously, but yeah, this makes more sense. Okay, so this is X dominant tuple, and now we can just say self dot set position, and we're going to say a list of possible cells. So what we're going to do is we're going to use renpy dot random dot choice list of possible cells. Choice is basically a pretty nifty function that's in the random module. Rempy uses the random module. It's just kind of swallowed up the code from it into implementing its own. But it's, it's essentially exactly the same. Um, choice just basically will pick a number, a, a random choice from within that list. So we're just passing one of these tuples, whichever one is deemed to be appropriate uh, as our position to be. So this will move our position every single time that we can move nice and simple yeah so our update method is going to be called from the room class or from the instance of the room so we need to do an update method within our class here so i'm just going to do define update in here as well and this is also going to be self we're just going to put a pass in there for now so what we're going to do is we're going to cycle through all of the cells in our matrix and if they are an entity then we will get them to do something. 
So what I'm going to do to simplify this whole scenario is I'm actually going to take this chunk of code here that creates a list of possible cells and I'm actually going to feed them into the game room class. So I'm going to take nick this whole chunk of code here and I'm going to go back to the game room class like so and we're going to create another method in here called define uh, get empty spaces yeah, yeah that'll be fine self dot position like so okay now I'm going to pump that in there so x is self dot get position and we don't need that anymore we can just change that to position and we can change this to position so we're receiving a tuple and when we create a list and then all we're going to do is return list of possible cells like so so now we can just call upon the room itself and say give me empty spaces around this position and then that means that the entity class doesn't need to do any of that stuff Actually, we want the so we're going to say if room dot get empty spaces if there is anything contained within that list then we can say so we're returning just a list return empty, get empty spaces and we need to actually input the position that we're going to move to there so we'll just grab that get empty spaces and now we need a position so we're going to say move self room say self dot get position there self dot get position so we're saying are there any empty spaces around and if there are then move into one of those things now the way that we're going to store our entities within the game room means that it's not just a simple case of setting the position within our entity class and that being it we actually need to tell the room that we have moved and where we've moved to and where we've moved from in our update method or our move method or something within our room we need to be able to basically tell the room class that the object that you've got currently stored in the original position of this entity needs to be moved to the new position so we're going to need to create a method within our room class Yes, and lots of editing in the room class. I'm going to say move entity self. So we need to check on the room instance itself first. And then we're going to say entity and position. So we're going to say the entity, this entity needs to be moved to this position, which does mean that we also have to remove it from the previous position. Because bearing in mind that our room is just a list of lists, and we can have a reference to an object in multiple different places which we don't want so the first thing we need to do is find the reference to the entity object and replace it with a zero and then put a reference to the entity object in the new position so what you can see here is i have annotated the code to make it a little bit more readable and um, this is a habit that i would strongly recommend that we all get into doing as we go through um, and our new move entity method is quite simple. All it does is it takes in the entity that it's checking for and the position. It will then cycle through y and x by using this for y in range and then the length of the matrix and the y dimension and the length of the matrix in the x dimension. And it will cycle through until it finds the exact object that we're looking for and it will replace that object with zero then all we do is we put the object in its new position which is position one position zero remembering that the core the tuple that we receive is x dominant and the position within the matrix is y dominant so that should be nice and simple there and this method will actually allow us to move any objects not just the entities um, because we're checking for an exact copy of whatever it is we're checking for this in this case we're passing in this can be anything it can be a um, game object as well as an entity so that's quite handy if we were to want to move um, an object within our grid 
So we're just going to test everything that we created that we added to our room class just to make sure that everything is still functional. So we're going to say, um, in fact, I believe I typed the command not so long ago. So we'll just scan through. Um, there we go. Room equals room test sausage. So we're going to create a new health potion. Health equals health potion. And it's going to just have a value of 10. It doesn't really matter. We're not using it for that. So there we go. So now we've got a room and we've got a potion. So we're just going to say room dot add item. So it's added it to nine and 10. Now let's just quickly double check what our method is called. So we can now say uh, room dot move entity health. So we're looking for the health potion and we want to move it somewhere completely different. Let's move it to five comma five. But remembering that this has to be passed in by a tuple, so it's going to be in brackets like that. There we go. So now, if I print the matrix, our health potion should be at 5.5, 5, not at 10.9. So we'll just do print room dot get matrix. I think that's a small g, get matrix. There we go. So five along. Well, let's be the sixth because zero is our first number. So yeah, they go five by five is there. And our health potion is in that position. Now we can also check our get empty spaces method. So we will say uh, print uh, room dot get empty spaces. And we're going to give it the position of uh, five along and six up. So we should be the position below. So I'm looking for this zero here. Uh, hit enter. Okay, so what we're seeing is four along and six up. So this one is empty. The six along and six up is empty. Five along and seven up is empty. But notice that it hasn't told us that the position five five is empty because it's not empty. So we now know that those two methods do exactly what we wanted them to do because we're geniuses and we can move on. So the entity class at the moment is actually pretty simple in its implementation. Um, it's probably going to stay that way, to be honest. When you're coding in Python or RemPy or Java or C Sharp or any of the object oriented programming languages, it's very important to plan your code or to think about your code in a way that makes it as simple as possible and a class should only be responsible for one thing a method should only be responsible for doing one thing so that's why in our game room class our get empty spaces method only does one job all it does is it takes in a position and it tells and it returns a list of possible positions that that thing can be moved to the move entity method only does one job it removes the entity from its current position and puts it in a new position that's it that's the one job it does and it's responsible for that because the room class is responsible for storing all of the objects within it that is why we're doing the moving within the room class and not within the entity class in fact thinking about the entity class we don't actually need this position at all we can remove that like so we don't actually need to know where the object is within the entity class itself because that information is stored within the room class because that's the room class's job. So I think that's enough for this episode. Thanks very much for watching and bearing with me. Um, I will look forward to seeing you in the next one, but let me know what you think in the comments below anyway. And uh, until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.